This is my original personal computer. It's a Commodore VIC-20, and this thing is old. I had this back when I was a teenager, and I used it a lot. I learned a lot about programming with this computer. Now, it only could program in basic language. There was no operating system, there was no Windows, and we had to save everything onto cassette tapes. That's how it worked. Well, several years ago, a guy by the name of Jeff Graham out of Australia, he actually produced or reproduced this retro style computer on a single chip, a single microchip. And now you can buy a board with all the supporting circuitry, including Arduino connectors, and build your own retro style computer that you can program in that same old fashioned basic language. And I actually did this and made a nice case that I put on Kickstarter. And it was a successful Kickstarter, not huge, but successful enough. And I did this as a laser cut case. But I always wanted to do one as a 3D printed case. And here it is. So I'll show you how I made this on today's Filament Friday. So here's the finished lower half and it's really just a bunch of boxes put together. So I'll ungroup and show you some of it. Now I do have words on the front here that are recessed, but everything else is pretty much a box. So I have boxes made as holes to cut out the front and the back, and then I have these boxes that are stretched out to make the platforms for the board. And then the case itself is a big box. Now on the bottom, I did use these round roof pieces and stretched them out to make edges on another box that was laid really flat. And then for the corners, I used a sphere that I squished down and sized and then placed it right in the corner to match those round roof sections. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So once I had that, then what I wanted to do is take just the bottom section and repeat that for the top, like I have here. And then I brought in the bottom section, flipped it over, and made that into a hole and lowered it down into what's going to be the top so I have this nice groove. Now that's a perfect fit so I need to make those grooves a little bit wider so I just brought in a bunch of boxes again stretched them out made them into holes and made them just a little bit wider and then grouped that all together and now I had my top. So now the next step was to bring this into Simplify 3D and I wanted to use the custom support tool. So I had that generate automatic supports, but then I removed support that I didn't want, such as the lettering. I didn't need support there. I didn't need it in the round hole. And I didn't want it near these thin walls. So I removed all the pieces I wanted, and then I knew some support was needed, so I went back and added support manually where I wanted it, but not touching the walls, because I don't want to touch in the walls if I, when I'm breaking away the support, I don't want to break away those thin walls. So that's a great advantage of Simplify 3D that allows me to do this. So then once I had supports everywhere I wanted, now I just needed to edit the process settings so I could slice it. So I went into there, selected PLA, I did a layer height of 0.2, uh, four top, four bottom layers, and a temperature of 200 degrees for the PLA I'm using. I included a raft, generated support, 25% fill, and I sliced it and it was ready to go. And then I did the same thing for the top lid and then I sent them both off to the maker front. Here's the result off my maker front printer with a blue inland PLA and I got this stuff printing actually pretty good now. Um, overall I think it came out good but there's some flaws in the slicing I think that caused issues. The letters in front Maximite came out perfect. All the holes line up perfectly except the SD card slot needs to move over a little bit and that's my design that's my fault but the support broke away beautifully and it worked out great the problems were the edge the edge is not nice and round and I printed this on a raft hoping to prevent any warpage 
and there's no warpage, but when I peeled off the raft, the bottom's really rough. And when I printed the top, I did the same thing. I didn't want to have to put uh, support in these grooves. So I printed that like this, and when I peeled off the support, really rough. And that's the top, you know, when it goes on. So I wanted to try something different. So I went to the Cura site, and they got a new beta version, a totally new version of their Cura slicer. I think it's 2.1. So I downloaded that and sliced this lid on it, and here's the result. Same plastic, same, I did a raft, everything the same. The edges are nice and round, just like the design. Um, both surfaces are pretty smooth. The only drawback is there's this like grid work that goes across that I can't peel off. It's a one layer thick, but it's sticking so good to the surface, I can't peel it off. So that's a drawback. But other than that, this thing looks good and it fits even tighter. It's an interference fit. So the dimensions are even better on the Cura. So I went back to Simplify 3D and I sliced it in a way that I would have supports with the groove. So basically I flipped it over 180 degrees. And for some reason, this time it printed better. The edges were rounder. The surfaces of both sides are better. And it also has an interference fit. So it fits tight. So I, I don't know why that's so different because it was the same settings that I, as I did the first one. So it may be something related to how the plastic was flowing, but I did the same flow rate and everything. So. I actually sent uh, pictures of this roughness to Simplify 3D just to ask them, is there a way to improve this? Did I do something wrong? And they, the next day, this morning, they, they got back to me. And I didn't have time to reprint with those settings that they gave me in order to get this video done, but I'm going to try that and see if that works better. So I love the way Cura is printing the new stuff, but I also love the way Simplify 3D has someone I can contact and get some support. So let's fire this guy up and I'll show you some old-fashioned computing and how much fun it can be. Okay, so I've got everything connected. I got the power adapter, I got the VGA cable for the monitor, I got a PS2 key keyboard connected here, so that's the older style keyboard, and an audio jack connected to a little speaker. And I'll shove this aside and you see this is the screen you see once the computer is powered up. It says Maximite, but I got a little prompt here, and that's where we type our program. Okay, so let me show you the program everyone would do their first time. You would print hello world in quotes, and then the next line you would just say go to 10, and then you type run. And this thing will just go hello world over and over again. So here's another example of a simple program that I actually wrote for mine. And it's a Pong game. And I did this in about, I don't know, 50 lines of code. But it's just one of the capabilities this thing had. One of those old-fashioned computer games. So here's another thing it can do. If I use the play mod command and I have preloaded a .mod file, that's the old-fashioned music files that were on these old-fashioned computers. So if I hit enter, and it plays that old fashioned music, it sound familiar? It's the same music I was using for my time lapse. So there you go, some old fashioned computing on the Maximite computer. So I enjoyed this project, and this is one I have been wanting to do since I bought my first 3D printer. If you like this type of project, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more projects like this, please subscribe. I try to do these build projects rather than just reviews or filament reviews or any of that. I try to squeeze in how to actually use your 3D printer. That's what I'm trying to make this channel all about. And if you like that and you want to support it, a dollar a month to my Patreon account helps pay the bills and helps me grow this channel. And I try to put more and more material, blog posts, behind the scenes information on my Patreon channel just so you get your dollars worth. So that's all I've got. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.